Welcome back to the College of Tuber Studies. Today I'm going to attempt to show you how I make a thumbnail. So you see behind me already I've got the green screen and some lights set up. So what I do when I'm taking a thumbnail photo, usually what I'm doing is I'm just taking a screenshot. I'll hit the record button on my camera and then I'll pose. I'll make some faces, you know. They ignore the disastrous state of my room slash studio right now. So I'll get in front of the camera and I'll go or and you just hold the pose for a few seconds. You do, you know, a few different poses to see what will work and then uh, you'll find one. Now you see I have a green screen behind me because what I found a little trick is, let me see if I can pull up Final Cut. This is Final Cut Pro, the editing software I use. So you see all the poses I made in front of the green screen, right? Then I import it into Final Cut and I use a keyer effect and I just drop it on there. The keyer basically, if you don't know, is taking out the green screen and making that part transparent so that when you have nothing behind it, it just turns black. What you can do is you can go to File, which you're not going to be able to see, but you go to File, Share, and Save Current Frame. And so that'll export whatever frame that you've clicked to in the video and my computer is struggling right now and uh, it'll export that and the trick is that when it usually when it exports with the keyer with nothing behind it you get an already cropped picture all cropped isn't the right word but you see it's translucent except for me it already cut out the green screen so that's just a quick way of doing it so you don't have to manually cut around now a lot of the professional YouTubers use Photoshop. I don't have that kind of money. What I use is Pixelmator Pro, which is a paid app on uh, for the Mac. It's in the the App Store. And when I bought it it was $35 and I think the price has gone down. I recommend Pixelmator Pro. That's for Mac only. So if you have a PC, you'll need to find something comparable. But what you really need in a photo editing program is the ability to cut around yourself or any object so that you can cut it out and have a translucent background. Or so just so you can get more separation. This is one instance where I think you need to maybe pay a little money to get the extra professional look. You can get away without it. There are plenty of YouTubers who don't do thumbnails like this. And in another video, which I may or may not have made already, I'll show you examples of many YouTubers and the kind of thumbnails they make. Everyone has a slightly different style, but I'm going to show you what I do and what I think works. This thumbnail is going to be for a video called How to Deal with Negative Comments and Haters. So you've got me doing a pose already that's kind of like, huh? Negative? Oh no. And when you're doing a pose, you kind of want to implicate what is the tone of the, of the video or what people might find interesting. This is the thing about thumbnails, which is why so many YouTubers do the same like faces in all their thumbnails because you're trying to impart to them that there is some heightened emotion in the video, even if there's not. Because you know my videos, I'm talking like this barely more than a monotone but your videos your thumbnails should be presenting something intriguing i'm going to try to show you what i do but i might not explain everything you'll get the idea of what i'm doing but maybe not exactly technically what i'm doing so i'm gonna what's uh, i'll put it over here because a lot of my videos have text on this side so this one i'm going to put it on this side i try to change up the thumbnails a little bit I'm going to make myself a little bigger. It's good to have a big photo of yourself. Now we're going to add text. This is the impact font. This is like the most widely used font for thumbnails. On my main channel, I try to avoid impact because it's so typical, but it works. You know, it's it works. So the video is about negative comments and haters. 
you'll notice that I'm not the most savvy with this program, even though I've been using it for over a year. Now on thumbnails, you don't want to go too crazy with filling the frame with a bunch of stuff. It's good to have some white space. And we're not going to have this problem in this thumbnail, but you generally want to avoid putting stuff, text especially, in the lower right corner because on YouTube, that's where the timestamp goes. We'll make the word negative a bit bigger. That maybe is too big. And then haters, maybe we'll make that even bigger. Ooh, that's pretty good. If I do say so myself, I'm just going to be complimenting myself the whole time. We're not going to keep the text red, but that's just the default. So that's what we're going to have right now. So there's a few basic things, basic parts of a thumbnail, a photo of you or the product or whatever the focus of the video, some text. You don't always have to have text, but most thumbnails do just because it's an extra way of catching people, the background and then uh, extras, little extra things, whatever that may be. For this thumbnail, I'm going to try to do all four. So we already have text, we have a picture of me, now we need a background. So we'll add a layer. Sometimes what I do, I search for a color palette. So why don't we try, one I like is retro color palette. So now we can look around and we can just go to images. And here we have a bunch of color palettes. You know, I'm not a graphic designer. So I just, uh, I have to rely on other people. I like this color palette. You don't even need to open it because what we're going to do is we go back to our thumbnail. Here's the gradient we have. So I think I want to try that purple background. So you can't, all right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it outside of the screen so that I can actually do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the color dropper tool and I'm going to select that. So it'll just automatically get that color for our background. So we've selected the color the dropper, I'm going over to the purple, and now let's try it. Okay, now it's looking a bit like Barney. Barney the dinosaur, you know? So this is already off to a rip-roaring start. Let's try a different, let's just try a plain color. I'm trying to get too fancy sometimes, you know? I'm gonna go over to the fill tool, drop it in. So I'm just thinking to myself like negative. What color comes to mind when you're thinking of negative? Maybe red? So then obviously we can't have red text, right? See, I've got everything in a different layer. Text is in one layer, my face is in another, the background's in another. We come over to the text. Text we're gonna change to, let's just change it to white. There we go. Just the white on its own is fine, but a lot of times what you'll see YouTubers do on their thumbnails is add a stroke, which means a line around the edges of photo or text, and it just makes it pop a little. So we're going to change the stroke to go to the outside of the letters and we're just going to turn it up pixel by pixel. That's about 10 pixels. That looks pretty good. Let me see if I go a little more. 15. That looks pretty good. It's popping. Now what I, what I can also do is zoom out so I get a little bit more perspective on what this might look like to someone seeing it on YouTube because, you know, you're looking at a, a thumbnail blown up but everyone else is gonna see it like this big, you know? How does something look when it's only two inches on a screen? Most people watch on their phones, so it's even less. It's like a half inch, if that. And sometimes what I like to do is I come over and I transform and I just skew it a little so it's not straight on. You don't have to do that and sometimes that looks gimmicky. So you have to use your own good judgment there. We'll go back to me over here and we're gonna add a stroke around me stroke color we're actually going to make it white i like to go to the pencils to pick white style we want to go to the outside because if we go to the center it doesn't line up correctly and now i'm popping more out of the picture you see now sometimes you get this issue where you see there's a white line here it's because i didn't get all of me so this is a little bit of cleanup i have to do We'll go back to my picture. Yeah, I see that's the remainder of the green screen. The, a little shadow is what it really is. There we go. It's a little better. Now, usually I would put myself more toward that. Well, let's do that. Yeah, I'm going to put myself more over to the side. So you see, I have some space here. This is where we're going to put our little extra accoutrement, as I call it. <laughs> the little extra flare besides the text, face, background. And what I'm going to use is an emoji 
I think I'll use the devil with the horns emoji. And emojis are good because they quickly communicate an emotion or an idea without you having to do too much work. So I go over to Emojipedia and we'll search devil, angry face with horns, but we want it smiling because haters are happy. We go back over here, we add another text layer and we paste our devil with horns. And I'm gonna transform. This is looking a little bit cluttered. This isn't exactly what I want. So I'm gonna to try to move my picture over and move the devil to this corner. There we go, that looks a little better. Keep in mind the rule of thirds here, which in photography and design, you imagine your canvas here split into thirds both ways. And so you want, this is like on the third line here, my face, so that's pretty good. And the text is over on a third here, instead of having everything in the center. So now with the devil, can we, should we make him bigger? You see, I'm just kind of having fun, seeing what, what makes me have a laugh as I'm doing this. And let's see, then we'll go to stroke. We'll put a little bit of a black stroke around that. And I'm, I, don't, I don't love how it's over my head there. So I'm gonna have to move myself a little bit to make some space. Remember, you don't want things too cluttered. You want it to be mostly clean, quickly communicating the, the idea of the video. Because if it's too much stuff at two inches, it's just gonna look like a mess. People aren't gonna know what they're looking at. So there, it's basically done right there. Sometimes what I do is I will export this and then this is like a probably a lame thing to do, but that's how it goes. So what I do is I open it up in photos and you can see here, I've got some past thumbnails that you may recognize from my main channel and from Tuber Studies. And we just hit the magic wand button and see what it does. All right, so you see it made the red a little redder. It made my face a little bit, a little, let's look at comparison. Yeah, so I actually like that. It just pops it a little bit. And if we go over to edit, it upped the brilliance there. Sometimes what you can do is go down to intensity, uh, the sharpen tool, and you can play around with the intensity, which I like to do. It over sharpens it. Like this doesn't look good up close, but it over sharpens it so that once people are seeing it as a thumbnail, it looks a lot more crispy and sharp. So I just do it a halfway because if you do it too much, then the text starts to get really pixelated looking. So I'm done and I'm going to export it. What's good about using photos also is that once you export it, it compresses the file so that it is small enough for YouTube. You need a photo that is less than two megabits, megabytes rather. I, I don't, do you see how comp computer illiterate I am? A very long tutorial, but I hope that this has given you some ideas on how to uh, up your game with thumbnails. Make, this is kind of a youtube -y style. You can really do whatever you want. Check out other YouTubers that are successful and try to copy the thumbnails they do. See, what are they doing with this thumbnail and can I recreate it? That's really the best thing to do. That's what I did. And I wish you the best of luck. Join me next time at the College of Tuber Studies.